Hello everyone, I'm Mike Conroy, Habitat Conservation Specialist with the Tualatin Soil and Water Conservation District, and I'm here with my friend Mitch Taylor, retired ODF forester and volunteer for the Tualatin Soil and Water Conservation District. Um, it's the middle of November, it's sunny and dry out today, but it's been raining a lot lately. We're here in the Tualatin River watershed in the Willamette Valley, and we're going to talk a little bit about uh, planting Oregon white oak. Uh, otherwise known as Quercus gariana. So the reason why the Tualatin Soil and Water Conservation District is so interested in uh, Oregon white oak is that it's been a large part of the habitat for over a thousand years. We've lost a lot through uh, changes in how we've used the land in the past 200 years. So now we're encouraging people to plant it more or less throughout the entire county to try and bring back some of the wildlife habitat and, and certain species that depend on it. So now I'm going to let Mitch Taylor talk a little bit about some of the seedlings that you might find at some local nurseries if you wanted to plant some on your own. Thanks, Mike. We have some typical seedlings you would find at any local nursery that grows oak. This is about a two-year-old seedling from uh, an acorn and uh, put in a fairly small pot. These, same thing, about the same age, but they're in pots that allow for a much deeper root system and they actually train the, the root to make uh, the tap root go straight down. Uh, we've got a couple of seedlings here that aren't really available this time of year. They're typically uh, bare root. You can buy them by the bag, uh, but uh, not usually available until around February. This is a much older seedling, probably six years old, not typically what you would plant unless you wanted it in your yard or somewhere where you can irrigate it or water it. Yeah, we typically recommend um, smaller, hardier, uh, more fibrous rooted um, seedlings. Um, and if you're going to be planting things that are larger, which can be appealing, you need to be prepared to irrigate it more so in the summertime with deep watering. So I think now we're going to move over here to a planting site and talk a little bit about um, why we're planting in here and what you might want to look for with where you're going to plant. When you're talking about a site, you want to make sure that you've got plenty of sun. As long as you've got sun, you're probably gonna get the oak tree in the proper place. It also needs plenty of room from other trees. So oak trees can grow really wide and they'll be, they'll be happy, but if you plant them too tightly, they're gonna get shaded and outcompeted. So we recommend um, about 40 feet from you know, a structure or another tree that's mature. Um, you do wanna make sure that you're not planting it somewhere that's too wet. So if there's standing water in the, in the winter time, it's probably not a good location. And probably the final thing is you want to think about what are you planting into. So here at this site, we're planting into an old pasture. You can see a lot of brown dried up grasses. They're not going to compete very heavily with this uh, tiny seedling, but we are still going to clear away some of the soil. If you were looking to plant into a field of um, non-native blackberry, that would not be good. Okay, it's going to take that over really quickly. All right, I'm going to walk this seedling down to Mitch. He's going to talk to you a little bit about uh, planting quality. Nice seedling, certainly. Uh, we've already cut away the grasses right around the hole, like Mike mentioned, and I've already dug the hole a little bit deeper than the root system on the seedling, and it's probably twice as wide as the container was. I'm going to go ahead and put it in the ground. Uh, very important to get the root collar of the tree uh, right at the ground level or slightly below when you plant it. The root collar is just where the tree differentiates between root growth and the top. And when you're holding the seedling, you can see it's a little bit bigger around right there. You can tell the difference. You want that at ground level. So as you can see, my hole is slightly deeper. So I'm going to start by putting a little bit more dirt back into the hole. I'm holding the tree this way so as not to disturb any of the root system. And I get it to about the right level. And then I do it by hand and simply bring the dirt in around the seedling. Simple as that. You could tamp a little bit as you go and, and try to make sure that you're minimizing any disturbance to that containerized root system. Almost done. Anything to add, Mike? No, I think after this, we'll talk a little bit about, you know, things to think about with uh, maintenance and protection. Um, as you can see at this site here, 
there is, um, you know, we've done some oak planting in the past and we've got heavy deer browse out here, but depending on where you're planting in an urban area, you might have to worry about um, places that might be getting too much irrigation or places where uh, lawn mowers and weed eaters could be taking out your seedlings. So these don't grow fast. So you need to make sure that they're um, in a place that they're not going to be disturbed and that they're very visible. Um, but yeah, that looks great, Mitch. Hey, I like it. <laughs> Uh, I'm gonna, I've got this uh, tube that helps a lot with uh, survival in terms of protection and also moisture conservation. I'm gonna hand this over to Mitch to start putting on. Um, so at this setting here, we're, you know, with these sm the smaller uh, seedlings, we're not planning to come out here and water these. And you don't always have to water your oaks. I would say the rule of thumb is the, the larger stock size you have, you might need to think about watering it a few times deeply over the summer, but out here we've got less invested per plant. So we actually, you know, may over plant and just, you know, see which ones survive and then kind of, you know, we just go from there. Um, so when we planted this, we scalped away some of the grass around here. So it's, you know, we're heading into winter right now. There's not any competition. Come next spring, you know, you're going to see a flush of growth around the seedling that's going to be pulling uh, soil moisture away from our seedling. So some of the options you can do is you can cut or scalp around it. Um, I like using mulch where I can access it. So Mitch, if you want to get some mulch around the tube here. So this is not only going to help suppress some of the growth, but of the, the weeds and the grasses, but it's going to conserve moisture around the seedling. Um, but yeah, there's a lot to, lot to think about, but the main thing is just get started doing it. These oaks don't grow quick. You know, you need to um, get them in the ground as soon as possible. Reach out to us at the Tualatin Soil and Water Conservation District. If you have questions, we're here to help answer those and, you know, break down some of the barriers so we can get some more of these things in the ground throughout the county. Uh, you can visit our website at tualatinswcd.org and happy planting, everyone. Thanks.